Welcome to the HVAC Know-It-All Podcast. Recorded from a basement somewhere in Toronto, Canada. Your host and HVAC tech, Gary McCready, will take you on a deep dive into the industry discussing all things HVAC. From storytelling to technical discussion. Enjoy the show. Um, so the ECM motor, um, Corey, do you see a high demand for that motor as well? Yeah, we are getting more and more calls for them. Um, they're still, I wouldn't say they're new to the industry. They're a little bit new still to the aftermarket. A lot of the uh, OEM guys like train and stuff have that motor built specifically for them. We're seeing in our marketplace now, uh, motor manufacturers like Nidec have brought out a line that can adapt to those uh, OEM situations and be used in those locations. And that's the rescue brand, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause uh, you, you see that um, when you're online talking to other techs, a lot of techs refer to a universal motor as a rescue motor. And I figured that NIDAC start, sort of started that trend with the rescue sort of sub brand, right? Yeah. And it's not just ECM in that rescue sub brand. What the rescue brand sub brand is meant for is guys like you to carry a certain um, low volume of motors in your van that'll, um, you'll be able to replace thousands of motors out there. So the rescue brand can be, I think there's a few shaded pole motors, um, some permanent capacitors, and then the ECM motors. But the theory is if you carried these 10 motors in your van, you could replace thousands of motors built over the last 30 years. Often will come as like four speed or five speed motors. And then you, you, know, you just choose how many you need, but they would fit all those applications. They would come with extra long shafts, adapt different types of mounting. I see. Yeah. And no, I've, I've really seen a, a push or a bit of an uptrend in universal parts in general over, over the course of a couple of years, because for the amount of equipment that a service tech could see in a month, I mean, they could see like 20 different brands of, of, of equipment and having a universal part that could fit many different brands across the board is super beneficial. To, to any tech that's driving around performing service calls, right? Yeah, well, that's where the need comes in. You know, there are still furnaces that are 30 years old who obviously the OEM doesn't make that anymore. How's this customer going to get a product? And, and that's obviously where these multi-fit uh, motors have come in. Mm -hmm. Cool. So as we move on to sort of the educational side of the, the ECM, in, in, a, in, in a nutshell, basically, Chris, what is an ECM motor and how does it differentiate between that and a, and a PSC, the traditional sort of motor? For sure. So with just uh, the advent of technology over the last 30 years, um, manufacturers have been able to build a smarter motor with servo and stepper technology. So these ECMs um, are just similar to like a smart motor. Uh, they have a, an electronic control board that controls the motor speed and horsepower. Um, and just lets it run a lot more efficiently. So your motor can run all the time and the control on the motor can control the speed for different situations, whether it's heat or cool, or if you have your fan run all day. So it's just a lot more intuitive to what the customer needs. Mm -hmm. Now, ECM motors is, is a motor component and then the, the module component, right? Um, the electronic True. component. So there's, there's always a debate out there on if you have a, an ECM, and it's funny when you say ECM motor, a lot of people say it's like, it's, <laughs> you can't say ECM motor because it's like saying electrically commutated motor motor, right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so um, the, the digital or the electronic component and the, the motor component. Now there's a, lot of, there's a lot of debate that I see online where techs are like, well, if it's not working, just change the whole thing, change the whole assembly. And then other techs are like, well, why wouldn't you troubleshoot the, the um, electronic portion and replace that if, if that's the only thing that's bad and the motor is fine? So what is your take on that? Well, we're seeing a lot of those questions come to us. And from the manufacturers that we deal with, we can't just replace the electronic component. Um, since it's kind of built into the back of the motor, uh, from our manufacturers, they only supply us a whole new component, which is the motor part and the electronic part. Um, I'm not sure if through any of your vendors, can you get just the electronic part or is that? Kind of um, the same? So, so myself personally, I do not see a lot of ECM motors in the field. Okay. 
uh, because I work on a lot of larger, well, I'd say mid to larger commercial equipment and they're all belted three phase machines, most of them anyway. Yeah. Um, so I don't really see a lot of ECMs, but from, from what I read online and in all the platforms I'm involved in, um, there are techs out there that are just changing out the electronic modules. So I don't know what brand of motor that is, but they are, they are doing it. So in some situations, the OEMs might be selling uh, just modules that they can change them out. The price of ECM motors has come down quite a bit. Um, we have some Gentech brand on our website um, that will replace a lot of the earlier Gentech or Century or GE motors. And mm -hmm. a new motor and module can range anywhere from four to eight hundred dollars. So depending how old your motor is, if your motor was ten years old and your module went, you might just want to replace the whole thing. Uh, if it was newer than that, then you might want to look around for a module. But depending on the tech too and your your level of um, electronic knowledge it sometimes might be easier just to replace the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, let's talk about your, before we get into the next motor uh, style, let's talk about, for instance, if we come across a dead ECM motor, how would we go about, because we, we need to talk about how your, your company works and how your platform works. Cause it's, you're an e-commerce motor supply shop. So let's say we go to a service call, we find an ECM motor, it's failed. Um, it's such and such a brand and we want to go to, to, um, emotorsdirect.ca to try to find a replacement. How, how does that, how does that process work? Yeah. So there's a, a few different ways they can search on the site. They can type in the model number of the motor. And if we have that cross-referenced in our database, um, the new version of that will come up with the ECMs. It's not so prevalent yet, just because they are newer on the market. Uh, it works better with the PSC motors. Um, so a lot of the PSC motors, we have a database of over a million different cross references of all the motors that have been built over the last 40 years. So a lot of those PSC motors, we do have some kind of replacement for. With the ECMs, it's a little bit more difficult, uh, but there isn't also the large selection of ECMs. Typically, they're all the same ratings, just different horsepowers. So depending on what brand you had, you can come to our site, go to our HVAC section, and then through there, with a couple of clicks, find our ECM section, and then we have the certain ratings that we carry. Mm -hmm. Now, Corey, I'll, I'll put this to you. So let's say I'm at um, such and such building, home or whatever, and and I want to return to this this particular particular site when the motor is there. So can I order the motor? Like, let's say my company is uh, Gary's HVAC or some some weird like <laughs> just just random here. So Gary's HVAC finds a dead motor. Um, but he wants it delivered to the customer through your website and then return once the motor's in stock. So I don't have to go drive around looking for one or calling and driving around the city. Can I order it directly to the customer from my account? Let's say, um, they receive it and then I just go back and replace it when it gets, gets in there. For sure. So when you order it, you can, uh, specify the, the ship to location. And then on the site, it obviously, when you log back in, you can check the order status. So you'd actually know when it would, when it arrives because the customer would sign for it and it'd be on site and ready for you to work on. Yeah, I could see that being super beneficial um, to me because uh, I've done this with, with different parts in the past where if I'm going to, if I know I'm going to my shop on a Monday morning and somebody says, hey, do you want me to deliver it to the shop for Monday? And I'll be like, sure, because I'm going there Monday morning anyway. And then since I'm there, the parts are there and I just, go to my job. I don't have to go to the supplier and wait in the line and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so I can see this really being beneficial for a lot of technicians. If they don't have to, yep. if they can just move, move on to their next call, have the motor like on order and just when it gets delivered, they get a notification, then they go back and change it rather than driving around. Right. I, I think that's super beneficial. For sure. And that's what we see with a lot of electrical contractors. They do their ordering after six o'clock. So we'll see lots of orders come in during um, the evening or the middle of the night. And then we process those orders first thing in the morning. Um, so a lot of electrical contractors or HVAC contractors will just go from job to job to job, break down the information, take some digital pictures. And then when they get home and after they have supper, they'll order their stuff, order the stuff they need on our website or some other websites, have it delivered to their customer's job. And then when it shows up there in a couple of days, you can just go back and install it. Yeah. What, what, do, you, what do you think about that, Corey? You think that's working for a lot of... Um companies out there that are ordering online? 
think it's more efficient. You know, we, when I even think about how we've had ran our business over the years, I need a I need a widget to fix something in our shop. I drive down to the local vendor for that thing. I stand in line for 20 minutes, half an hour sometimes. I wasted at least a half an hour driving, sometimes more. I think it's, you know, now that I buy more things online, it's really convenient for me to hop on. I know what I'm looking for, so it's not really that hard to find. I order it. I know it's coming. I move on to the next thing, and that's kind of off my plate. I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to wait in line. It's, um, I think it's just a more convenient way and, and less, you know, less of a time waster. Mm -hmm. Cool. So moving on to the next, the next motor, um, capacitor start induction run motors. Now, Chris, give us a, a quick rundown. And, uh,